Hello everyone, Gary here. I wanted to do a tutorial on my new HDA, the Circle Topo Bowl. And if you've seen the tutorial I released last week, this is an HDA version that's kind of related to that, but on steroids. And it automatically creates a circle bowl or patch wherever you select your geometry, provided that the geometry is all quads. Uh, it still works if it's not all quads, but it, it definitely does help if it's all quads. And I am purposely using a biologically modeled rubber duck toy that comes included with Houdini. So hard surface materials making circle bowls is fairly straightforward, but I wanted to give uh, the HDA circle tobo bowl a challenge. And I have a bounding box uh, all set up and transformed and kind of like group points that you can use a bounding object with. Uh, this HDA also has the option to use a bounding object or you can just type in your group or select some primitives from the drop down menu up here. Let me show you the base group option where you select your group of primitives. And let's flag it. It'll give us an error because we do not have a group selected. So we will just hit the arrow key and select some primitives. So let's say we want a hole, let's say right here on a shoulder. And we just try to make a square out of the primitives that we select. And ideally, uh, obviously, if you want proper geometry, you want to make your hole square shaped. It'll still work, but you won't get great topology if it's not square. But that's common sense. All right, we'll hit enter. And there you go, we have an automatically produced hole that retains quad topology. You have a radius width multiplier right here. You can change the radius of the hole patch. And um, right now I have uh, the use patch option down below. And that just, uh, if you want the hole filled, you just keep that checked. If you wanna get rid of the patch, there you go, you got your bowl. Once again, you could smooth the outer border on top of doing the radius. So what it does is it, it just gets the group that you selected. It extrudes it a bit to give it a border edge group before it cuts the hole. And that way you have a proper edge flow. If any of you are familiar with the make circle option, uh, you're familiar with how uh, funky the geometry can be. It can stretch a little bit too far to get that circle shape. So uh, this, what this does is it gives you a border edge before the circle starts so you can smooth it out and easily transition it. It also helps cut the distance the points have to travel to make a circle shape and you can just increase the size as will if it, the hole is not big enough for you. And you can see it's smoothing around and gradually transitions to a circle. Once again, this also conforms to the topology of the mesh. You'll see that the circle still retains its shape and is not flat, unlike the make circle feature in Houdini, which cr pretty much makes a flat circle and kind of distorts your geometry. So this conforms to uh, the rubber toy. All right, but this is fairly basic, uh, but it's a great automated way now in HDA form as opposed to the make circle and make circle tutorial I did, even though that conformed to the geometry in last week's tutorial. This is uh, fully procedural. So you can, you don't have to manually select and do a bunch of ray tracing and this will take care of that all for you. Uh, but more importantly, I want to show you how the bounding object works. So we'll hook that into the second input and we will select use bounding object, which is if you're familiar with the group node that gives you the option of using a bounding object to encapsulate uh, any primitives, whatever is inside of our box here. When we transform it, uh, those primitives will in turn become the group that is used to make a circle. So uh, this is big right now. So I put a transform there to get us started and move it into place. And this is what it looks like. Once again, same thing. It creates a circle with the primitives that are enclosed in that box. All right, and it still has the same functionality as well. You can change the radius, smooth out the border edge that transitions into a circle. Use patch, delete patch. More importantly, and this is the very neat part that I added before the preview. In last week's tutorial, uh, I moved this around a bit and I worked on it some more. And now there is a new option that I wanna show called use loop detection. And I have that turned on by default within the HDA. And this is what, what this does is watch what happens with the edge flow when I move quads, Still quads, all quads, still quads, no funky geometry, quads, 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 quads. 
no n-gons, no triangles. We have a biological shape. We are procedurally selecting a group to make a circle out of, and so it's going around the curve of the rubber toy, still retaining quads, quads, still quads. Yep, still quads. All right, and when I previewed this in last week's tutorial, this feature is, was not present, so I added this within the past few days. It'll get all the primitives that are located within your bounding object, and it will only use primitives where it can complete a circular edge loop around the selection and disregard any border primitives that make it in a regular square shape. So when we turn this off, you will see what I mean. And look at the difference. You'll see what the difference is when I do a transform. Ah, so we have uh, quite a bit of uh, goofy looking geometry here. Yeah, so it's pretty much uh, the uh, bounding object not following the grid pattern of your quads. And, you know, not every model has a perfect grid pattern that it can easily make a square fit inside a box at random. And so I have it on by default because who doesn't want perfect topology? Uh, but you'll see that it shrinks the square. And again, it's doing that because it's detecting primitives uh, that can only create a perfect edge loop. So if you have a perfectly box shaped object or perfectly hard surface quad model that you want to work on and you need the bounding object to be perfectly measured and you're me procedurally measuring out your individual primitives as a, to the size of your bounding box, you may want to use turn off the use edge loop detection so you get a perfectly sized hole in regards to your box shape. For the most part, uh, you, you wanna keep that on, so I'm gonna have that on by default within the HDA. I would recommend leaving this on, and if you want a bigger hole, you just transform your bounding object. So you could scale this up, and we get a much bigger hole. Move it in some. All right, so that is a, a basic introduction of the Circle Topo Bool tool. And so next we will go into a quick tutorial overview of the inside of the HDA. If you just want to download the HDA, uh, just visit my Gumroad page. Link is in the description. Uh, but next we will go over each part of the HDA and how to build it as a tutorial. All right, so let's dig inside the Circle Topo Bool HDA. We'll right click it and hit allow editing of contents. And then we will dive right in and we will see the graph inside. Let's give a quick tour of the graph before we dig in. All right, right here, these inputs represent the geometry coming in, in this case, the rubber toy, and this represents the bounding box. These two red boxes are just grouping the selected primitives into a group called circle points. So this is the group that you select manually, and the one on the right is the group that you select with the bounding box. Right here is the group without the edge loop detection, and this is the group with the edge loop detection as represented by this red box. And then we have a switch down here that is exposed at the top of the graph, uh, which I showed you that allows you to turn the edge loop detection on or off. And this is the switch that controls whether or not you are using a manually selected group or the bounding box option. All right, so that's the group section down below right here. All right, and right here in this middle section uh, with the orange box and gray box down here, this is where the magic happens. This is where uh, it becomes a circle. Okay, and so what this graph does, it gets the primitives that are selected to become a circle. And then we pretty much just extrude the borders of the primitive group and move those points towards the shape of a circle converging towards the center point that is raycasted onto the geometry so it retains a circular shape conforming to the mesh. And down below, we create a version with the hole and without the hole. So this right here on the left, this is the patch group that is isolated. And we eventually clean that up so it becomes more circular as you see right there. And this is the version uh, without the patch with the straight hole. And then we clean that up a little bit down below. And don't worry, we'll go into details later on, but this is just an overview of the full graph. We merge these together and facet them, make a group. And then we have the switch option right here, which is exposed in the parameter, uh, whether or not to use a patch or not to use a patch. 
So right there. And FYI, I generally color code uh, nodes that are exposed in the parameter interface in green. All right, and down below is fairly boring, but necessary. It's we're pretty much cleaning up groups that we do not need any longer so they don't contaminate future modeling. And we create a few groups just for ease of use. So we will create a group for the border that's highlighted right there. Create a group for the edge loop ring that starts the circle. We create a group for the actual circle ring. Clean up some groups we no longer need. We create a group of the points that create the circle. Uh, so it's a point group as well. And so uh, we give it a separate name from the front edge, which is the edge group for the circle. We just convert it to a point group. And the reason for that is you can just, after you apply the circle Tobo Bowl tool, you can put in a soft transform node, which we'll go over later on. And you just put in the group bull points. The soft transform does not take an edge group. It takes a point group. And this way you can squeeze and expand the circle and have a very nice smooth radius fall off. And so, yeah, I wanted to provide the user with a quick group right off the bat that they can just plug into another node and just transform their geometry at will. So that's what this is for, ease of use. And finally, we have our output down below. So that's a quick tour of the node graph. So cleaning up down below with adding some groups. This is our patch versus no patch option. This is the actual circle math right here. And the more complex version is believe it or not, right above is just making the groups. So the easy one is when you select the groups manually, we just name the group circle points. And on the right right here is when you use the bounding box. This is the simple bounding box without edge loop detection, this single node right here. And this is the math for using the bounding box with edge loop detection. So you do not get any funky geometry no matter where you move that cube. So long as you have a quad topology, you should be good and your circle will always have quad topology. All right, so now that we did a quick overview of the graph, let's do the scary part and dig inside. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Once again, please visit gumroad.com slash cinema for the HDA file for this. I also have a few other products on Gumroad. Herdini, the automatic hair card making kit for Houdini, as well as a course on rigging a game-friendly character for Unreal Engine using Houdini as well as a few other products such as the Pixel Art Substance Designer Filter that you can instantly make pixel art sprites out of for your 2D game or perhaps 3D game with 2D sprites. Also, I am on ArtStation at artstation.com slash cinema as well as obviously YouTube at youtube.com slash cinema and please subscribe. I am almost at a thousand subscribers. I would like to push that to over a thousand. So I'm almost there. I'm on a the doorstep. Thanks for watching. See you later.